I've learned that's not always the big decisions that have the biggest impact. It's the tiny decisions made every day that have the biggest outcome, I, at least for me personally. Um, you know, my parents taught that through me through their actions, and skateboarding really ingrained it into my head. With skateboarding, oh, it's kind of hard to see. Can you guys dim the lights just a little bit? Um, there's a lot of people falling in the background. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> but with skateboarding, you're constantly challenged with trying to stay on your board, and you're, you're making tiny, quick decisions to stay on. And as soon as you fall off, you're faced with you either give up or you reevaluate what just happened and learn from it and then try again. I got my first board in second grade. It was, uh, uh, it was the board of legendary skateboarder Christian Asoy. And I loved the way that he skateboarded, and I loved that skateboard graphic. From that, so from that moment on, I just wanted to skateboard, and I wanted to design skateboard graphics. So every decision that I made was based on those two things. So in third grade, we got to share what we wanted to be when we grew up. And I excitedly said, I want to be a skateboarder. And my teacher said, that's not a real job. <laughs> I was like, OK, I want to draw skateboard graphics. And she goes, how about a fireman? And while I love and respect the first responders, I decided to continue dreaming about skateboarding and design. So by the time <clears throat> ninth grade came around, skateboarding wasn't as cool as it was in second grade, or even close to as cool as it is and accepted as it is today. And I, I got picked on, and I got spit on, and I got jumped. And I got threatened multiple times by gunpoint when I'd skateboard around the city. So I made the decision to spend most of my time while I was at school in the art room and just drawing. This was carved in the study hall table that I sat at. The first time that I got jumped. It would have been nice if they continued that tradition, so I knew when it was coming. <laughs> so I decided to spend most of my time outside of school, not at social activities, but skateboarding every chance I got. However, skateboarding was pretty much illegal anywhere outside of a skate park, and there were no skate parks at that time. So I decided to get with my friends, and we met every Thursday to try to figure out how we can get a public skate park here in Omaha. And after five long years later, we got Robert's Skate Park built. And it was the first time that I felt like I contributed to this community in a positive way. And so I decided I'm going to spend every chance I get skateboarding here. And it changed my life. I ended up getting endorsed by some of the best brands in the world. And I toured for seven years. I was featured in magazines. I was on the covers of some. I skateboarded in front of crowds as big as 250,000 people. And I signed thousands and thousands of silly autographs. It was literally my childhood dream come true. I wanted to call my third grade teacher and let her know, it is a real job. <laughs> I also had a university professor tell me, not this university, by the way, tell me that there's no way that I can design and skateboard at the same time, that I'm going to have to choose one. Well, here's some of the skateboard graphics and designs I did while I was skateboarding on tour. And remember that skateboard that I got, the first one that kind of sparked all of this? He called me up to do his personal branding and design for his, for his skateboard company. It's that one there. This is Live Your Dreams, which is kind of ironic. So I still skateboard for fun, but uh, the, the, the design and branding that I did for the skateboard companies has now transitioned into the agency, uh, Secret Penguin. And so we work with a lot of companies and brands that we believe make a community unique. Here's just a sample of some of them that we've had the opportunity to work with. And like I said, I was, I was picked on quite a bit in high school. And a lot of them were the older football players. Not all, but some. And those some wanted to play for the NFL so bad, but never did. Well, the NFL and United Way called my agency a few years back, and we got to do some campaigns with them. So I like to think that's my little way of getting back at those jerks. <laughs> all right, remember these numbers? They didn't get any better. I don't have a redemption story for this. <laughs> but it's, it's a reminder to me how important it is to have a place for people to go and do something that they're passionate about and find community within that. And so every chance I get now, I've decided 
to advocate for skateboard parks. And I've had the opportunity to help get skate parks built all around the country now. This is something that, sorry. <laughs> this is something my dad told me when I was in high school. He's a very loving guy. It, I guess this out of context might not, <laughs> may not look like it, <laughs> but he is. Um, very loving and he's very matter of fact. It's this perfect rare blend of very thoughtful words when you need to hear it. And life, life is hard. And I've learned that very quickly and, and um, there's always ups and downs. But I believe that if we stay focused on our goals, not just for work, but also personally, person, personal goals, that over time in the long run, when we make tiny decisions based on those goals, it'll make life just a little bit easier. I've got one more story here. This is my daughter, Olive Jane. She's four years old. And she was born <clears throat> with benign hypotonia, which basically just means low muscle mass. Um, so she, she wasn't able to sit up um, until she was over a year old. And we had one person tell us that she may never be able to walk. So we made the simple decision that we would just do strengthening exercises with her every day. And last year, she took her first steps. <laughs> so if there's one thing that I want my daughter to understand, and I hope that's something that you guys will take away from today, is to not let others dictate what you can or can't do. Whatever it is you want to do, make it a goal, and then make tiny decisions every day based on that goal and figure out how to make it work in your own way. Thank you.